Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Daily Volatility Box Report for October 28, 2019. We are TOSIndicators.com, home of the Volatility Box. For today's trading, it was pretty light. We had trades in both the crude oil futures market, uh, along with uh, our gold trade between that 6 to 7 a.m. hour uh, period. Uh, we had one winner in crude and one loser, which gave us a net win rate of 50% and an overall P&L of negative 150. And our gold futures trade paid us $200 over our two contracts, helping us end the day positive. So overall today, we had three trades total uh, with the 66% win rate with two out of those three trades being winners uh, for an overall P&L of positive 50. On tomorrow's calendar, we have a one key event that I think is what's going to call us to be a bit more conservative, and that's the consumer uh, confidence numbers that come out. Um, and so here we've seen the market react uh, a little bit more uh, volatile than it usually does, especially on news events around these reports. And we've noticed that just a very binary way, let's say you don't understand the reports, uh, to understand uh, the significance or the impact of it has been to look at the Forex factory folders. And we've incorporated that even to our trade plan rules. And so for us, this is our sign to use our conservative volatility box. This takes place at 10 a.m. Pacific, so uh, pretty soon after the market opens. And so that first hour test isn't really what I think is going to be all that useful, although I think it'll be information. It's especially if we end up breaching through uh, those boxes either way, signaling that we should be using the conservative volatility box. Uh, but I think for these actual consumer confidence numbers, using the conservative volatility box is a smart move. Uh, and then based on the reaction, you can then make the decision on if you'd like to revert back to the aggressive volatility box or not. And at the end of today's video, we'll also cover some earnings plays in uh, ACAM, uh, TNT, MasterCard, and then ConocoPhillips. All right, let's start with our crude oil futures market first. We'll start by drawing our timeline and we check to see whether or not we breached either side's aggressive volatility box entry lines. We very clearly hadn't and this was our sign to continue to use the aggressive volatility box. Our entry came as price fell into our sign entry lines right here. Our stop was outside of the volatility box where we had given it 25 cents of room. And so if we move this up just a little, we can see that price eventually ended up uh, hitting our stop. And so while we almost had a reaction, we tried a couple times. And for the scalpers, you may have had a, a few nice reactions here. Um, but for us, we were looking for our first target, which was at least at 25 cents, which we didn't get. Price then ended up moving sideways. It looked like this was forming a U to start to go up. Uh, but we ended up instead falling down and stopping us out. As we stopped out, this was then our sign to switch on over to the conservative volatility box. And so once we switch on over to the conservative volatility box, we then started looking for entries once again. Our entry came as price fell perfectly into our conservative volatility box entry lines. And our stop was outside of the conservative volatility box, 20 cents wide. Our first target was that same 20 cents, which we hit almost right away. And then our second target was at that target line. Uh, and at this point, our stop had been moved to break even. And so it depends on how you like to trade and whether or not you like to take that afternoon risk. For us, we usually like to take our contracts off into the close instead of having that overnight sort of afternoon risk to see what happens with the 3 p.m. open. And so we ended up taking off our second contract. If you had stayed inside of this trade, then you're still working towards your second target and your stop is now moved to at least break even. And if you're trailing it up, you may be trailing it up above this pivot low or even this pivot low, but this pivot low would essentially be your break even. Next, let's move on to the gold futures and we'll switch back to our aggressive volatility box. We'll start by drawing our timeline and we check to see whether or not gold breached either side's aggressive volatility box entry lines. It very clearly hadn't, and this was our sign to then continue to use the aggressive volatility box for the rest of the day, at least until told otherwise. Our entry came as gold fell as the markets opened. We had our opportunity to go long, and we're only looking at gold between 6 to 7 a.m., just as a reminder, according to our trade plan. And so for us, this was our entry on gold. Our stop was outside of the volatility box. We gave it 2.5 points of room. We ended up uh, getting close to stopping out, but not quite stopping out. And then price just ended up fluctuating and we chopped around uh, sideways uh, and you had a few opportunities to get out. I think the most you may have gotten is a point and a half to two points. Uh, but for us, we ended up just getting out for a point apiece uh, on each of our contracts. Again, if you don't mind the overnight risk uh, or the afternoon risk, rather, then you're still in this trade as you never hit your stop. And I think you may be making your way up to your target. All right, let's start with ACAM first, uh, or Akamai Technologies. Okay, so using our Smarter Earnings tool, uh, the thing that pops out to us is the gap and goes here. And it's the fact that we have four gap and goes on a bullish beat. And so if we have that, which if we come and see what actually happened with the earnings, 
we did in fact have a beat. We had actual of a dollar and ten cents compared to the estimates of a dollar and four cents. And so if tomorrow we end up gapping up, uh, that means uh, opening above today's high and then not filling that gap, then we'll be looking for uh, a direction in that same bullish continuation pattern where our lowest bullish move has been only 18 cents. So be wary of this. Uh, but our average bullish move has been two dollars and 52 cents. Right. And so the next logical step to take here, um, uh, knowing that our lowest bullish move has been so small, just 18 cents, is to see what's happened when we have greater than expected moves. Uh, and that's very clear using these lime green bubbles. And so we check to see what's happened all the times that we've had a gap and go that's been bullish, but with uh, an actual greater than expected move. And here we can see this has been the 18 cent move. Uh, and here uh, you can see the actual earnings. Um, very similar. You had a uh, dollar ten uh, compared to a dollar six uh, seems like it's close enough numbers and so this is just something to be wary of with Akamai technologies but this is the pattern that sticks out then going down the line AT&T the pattern that sticks out on AT&T once again the total number of gap and goes being seven and so if we do have a gap in either direction um, and so far it looks like based off of earnings we uh, beat earnings and so most likely we're looking in the direction of a gap up and then a continuation in that same gap, uh, considering that we've had zero fills in the past two years. Then the next pattern that's been interesting has been in MasterCard. And so with MasterCard, we have earnings coming out tomorrow before market. Uh, but the pattern that's interesting here is the idea that we've had uh, a gap down fill on a beat, uh, but there's only been one data point here. But the other one that's interesting is the four times we've gapped up, uh, two of those times that we've then continued in those are in the same direction has been on a beat. So the way I read that is the three times that we've had a beat, the stock has continued moving up in the same direction. And so I think that is a pattern that pops out with MasterCard. And then with ConocoPhillips, uh, the pattern that's been interesting is the gap fills. And we see that there's been no pattern, uh, whether it's on an earnings miss or an earnings beat. Um, but the gap fill has been the, the thing that happens more often than not. And so that's the pattern that you might be looking at on ConocoPhillips. All right. So once again, for today, we had only three trades total uh, with a total winning rate of 66%. For us, we ended the day just positive $50. But if you happen to have been taking the overnight risk or the afternoon risk, then you're still in each one of these trades and you're, I believe, uh, green, just working your way up to your targets. All right. Take care, everyone. Be careful trading tomorrow and we'll see you in tomorrow's nightly update.